Okay, back again. Um, extending these connecting rods to take this Model T forward piston or replace the original cast iron pistons with the Model T forward here. Okay, so what we've done is we've fabricated up a top end, a gudgeon pin end. I, in this particular case, I, I've made it exactly or very similar to the Model T Ford. You know, it comes in at an angle. We're going to put a bolt through there, clamp it. But there's nothing to stop you from putting that up here. It's probably easier if you haven't got a milling machine to manufacture that with the bolt going horizontal at the top. It's not going to make any difference to the working of the rod. Remember, a connecting rod is always in compression. In most cases, it's in compression. The only time it's not in compression is if the piston seizes in the ball. If the piston seizes, then it's got to pull it down. It's tighter, it's grabbed, and it's in compression. But normally, under everyday running, the forces of compression are coming up are pushing down. The forces of combustion are pushing down, and so forth. So, so it's all, most of the time, this is in compression. Um, now we're going to weld this on here, so what we've done is we've set up a, a bit of a fixture here, which is just a plate, we've turned up a piece of bar here which is the same as the big end bearing here, the old big end size, and we've just bolted it through the back there, and then we've got our verniers here, and we've set up a distance here, we've checked this originally with the original head on it here, there's the original gudgeon on the top there and we found that that was seven and a half inches. The difference here we measured last time was 10 millimeters so we have to add another 10 millimeters to that. Okay you can see this piston is lower here so we've got to add that 10 millimeters on. So what I did is I said seven and a half inches plus 10 mil which is near enough to 400 thousand of an inch four and five are nine, that's 7.9 inches, which is there, I just set it on the verniers, and I put a little tit on the end there, and a little tit on there, and I've set that up to 7.9 inches. Okay, we've drilled a hole, and that's just bolted on there to give me that distance. We can then set this up in there, remember it's not welded at this stage, this one gets set up on this side, not the right way around. I think it'll go down there. Nice tight fit. There it is. We then ground this to fit on the connecting rod there. Now the most, we've got that right and then we're going to tack it on the side here once we get it in place. And, and all I did is just put a couple of packers under here to get that nice and square, lined it all up, zap, zap, and we've tacked it there in place. Now the most important thing which we, have to, we have to consider is that when we weld it, we get right through. And so I've always, I've put there about one and a half mil, about a sixteenth of an inch root gap. Now this is to make sure we get the weld right through. Now there it is, all tacked up, everything's right, lined up nicely, and now we're going to weld it. Now my choice of welding is manganese bronze with the oxy. Manganese bronze, very tough, uh, about the same tensile strength as the steel here, and the reason I use oxy is that it's a slow process, I can get right in, I can, I can um, very accurately move the metal around. If I use the arc, I only have a split second. And because it's a C-section in there, it would be very hard to work that and get uh, no, a proper fusion and no, um, uh, no porosity. Uh, I used to be a pretty good welder, but I reckon I, couldn't, I wouldn't be able to, uh, to get that uh, bond right through. So what I did, I used manganese bronze. Now there it is there. Easy to work. Got to use oxyacetylene of course. Flux. Just use ordinary copper and brass flux. Manganese bronze. I just used an eighth rod. Cheapest chips to buy. And uh, yes, and we, and we welded it. 
okay, both sides, and I was able to get right into the root. Actually, the first, the first run I did on one side there went right through, went right through the back of this of the rod here, and so I was able to then turn it over and just weld it on that side. Okay. Now I let that cool, and then. There it is there, it's got a weld on there. So I went back and I ground the weld out, that weld there out. I ground it out. And cut a V, use, use the angle grinder, the nice sort of four inch angle grinder. Got in there and ground that right out so that I was into the root of the weld that went across the web on the front there, the bottom web. Right in, cut it right in. I even cut it right in to the weld that, was, that went up the side of the side webs there. Um, ground it right back. Then I finished this off here with the linear show, just ground it back, got nice fresh metal here on the old connecting rod that was got, had a lot of oil um, stain on it. So I've got nice new bright metal there. And then I finish welding it. There it is there. Easy to do. Just welded it in that place, ran a weld across here, turned it over. Oxy welded across there, maybe touched up the edges here a little bit. A little bit came through here, well, that doesn't matter, that's extra reinforcement. There it is. Very strong, as I said before. It's only in compression most of the time. And, and don't forget, this car, you know, with, with uh, 31 inch wheels uh, and a, um, about a 3.8 to 1 differential, uh, if, if, I'm, if I'm running at about 1400 RPM, I'm doing, doing 60 mile an hour. So, so it, it's, not, it's not a very fast engine. It's not as though we were, we were a high speed motorbike or something like that that's pulling 16,000 RPM. It's only very light. So the forces on it are, are only very small compared to, to a, say, a high revving engine or a diesel engine or something like that. Okay, so i welded it right across there. I now just get, maybe I want to clean up this a little bit, just just a little bit too much reinforcing there. So I just get my my um, my angle grinder or my little file or something with cold chisel and I just clean it up a little bit. Don't take too much off. Leave the reinforcements there. It might not look pretty, but it's, it's quite strong. I know that the that the metal is bonded right through and the section there that's with bronze is the same section as the steel and that'll be quite strong enough. Okay, now the next thing we have to do is bore the connecting rod right here. Remember we've left that um, a millimetre above size and now we've got to set this up in the lathe and, and, and um, get a little boring bar and bore that out to the size of the gudgeon. The bolt hole here is to be slotted here. Well, we can do that later. If we, uh, if we bore that to right on size, uh, so it's a nice tight fit, we can then set that up in the milling machine, or we can just use a hacksaw and cut that right through. I've allowed the bolts here, I've allowed um, a 10 millimeter 3/8 bolt there. I'm going to use a cap screw because I feel that I can get an Allen key in there and really tighten it up where it's a bit hard to get a get a um, a socket in there. So I can set set that up there, and when I finish boring this, I will tap that out, and then we'll cut that, and then enlarge half it to uh, 10 mil or 3 eighths of an inch so that we have a clamping action there and we can cut that to size and probably put a put a, um, a split pin on that end there. Okay. So the next thing we have to do is go to the lathe and set this up to, um, to bore the gudgeon pin. 